In this video, you're going to learn how to create modals for your Discord bot using Discord JS. I'm also going to show you how to handle the information sent through these modals. So let's get started. If you don't already have a code base, the starter files are also available on GitHub. So I'll have the link to it down below. Now in this video, we're using slash commands to trigger these modals, but you can do this with any sort of Discord interactions such as buttons. So let's go ahead and create a slash command inside the slash commands folder called show modal.js. As usual, we're going to export an object from this command file. And the first property is going to be data, which is going to be the structure of our command. Now this command is really simple. We're just going to have the name and the description. We're going to set the name to show modal. And we're going to set the description to shows a modal. We also need the run function as part of this object. So make sure you add this as well. So the goal of this command is going to be to show the modal to the user and give them about 30 seconds to fill the information. As shown at the start of the video, the modal is going to look something like this, where the user will be able to input what's their favorite color and some of their favorite hobbies. Once they submit the information, we're going to reply to the user with the information that they provided. It's very simple, but it's going to show you everything that you need to know about modals in Discord JS. So let's go ahead and get started by importing a few things from Discord JS. The first thing is action row builder. We also need the modal builder. Then we need the text input builder. And finally, we need text input style. Now make sure your run function is asynchronous because we're going to be using a wait as well. So first of all, let's go ahead and design our modal. So I'm going to create a variable called modal and set this to a new instance of the modal builder class. And I'm going to pass in an object inside this object. We can set a custom ID. Now we want this custom ID to be unique. So I'm going to set this to my modal. And then I'm also going to go ahead and pass in the user ID of the person running the command. That's going to be interaction.user.id. Next, we also need a title for this modal, which is going to look something like this. So of course, I'm just going to go ahead and set this to my modal. Now let's go ahead and design all the input fields. Let's start with the favorite color one. So we're going to create a variable called favorite color inputs and set this to a new text input builder. We're going to go ahead and pass in an object. And over here, we're going to have a custom ID. We're going to set this custom ID to favorite color input. And then we also need a label. The label is what's going to be showing up here. So of course, I'm just going to set this to what's your favorite color. Next, we need to set the style of this input field. The style will decide what type of input field you want to have. This style is different from this because this is much larger. To get a smaller input field like this, let's go ahead and set the style to text input style dot short. Now let's also design our hobbies input field. So we're going to create a variable for that called hobbies inputs and set this to a new text input builder. As usual, we're going to pass in an object with a custom ID and this custom ID is going to be hobbies inputs. And then the label is going to be what's some of your favorite hobbies. The style on this one is going to be different because we want there to be a larger input field. So this is going to be text input style dot paragraph. Now you can't just take these input fields and then put them into the modal. What we have to do is we have to create rows. So inside our modal, we have two rows. One is going to be for the shorter input field and the other one is going to be for the paragraph. So let's create a variable called first action row. And we're going to set this to a new action row builder. And then we can add components to this. And the component is going to be the favorite color input. We can do the same, but make it for our hobbies. And this is going to be second action row. Now, the reason why we have two rows instead of just one is because modals just accept one component per row. That means you can't really have two input fields per row. Anyway, now let's go ahead and add these rows to our modal. So I can say modal dot add components and then pass in both the rows. So first action row and second action row. Now our modal is complete. So let's go ahead and show this to the user. We can do that by saying await interaction dot show modal and then pass in the modal. Let's save this file and try to run our bot. So open up your terminal and type node index dot JS. Now, once your command is registered, let's head over to discord and try to run the command. So once we run the slash command, a modal is going to pop up, but we can't really submit any information because we're not really handling this interaction. So now let's go ahead and handle modal submission. So back in our code, after we show the modal to the user, let's go ahead and create a section where we can wait for the modal to be submitted. 
So we can use our interaction object and add a method to it called await modal submit. And this method will take in an object. Now the first property is filter and the second one is time, which we can set it to a milliseconds of how long we want to wait for the modal to be submitted. In our case, we're going to wait for about 30 seconds. So I'm going to set this to 30,000. Now you may notice filter is not defined. So let's go ahead and create that. Now a filter is basically going to be checking for a specific modal with a specific custom ID. If you remember, our custom ID included our user ID. So let's go ahead and copy this one. So our filter will have the interaction object as the parameter and the interaction custom ID must exactly match this. Let's now add a dot then method, which will have the modal interaction as its parameter. Now the modal interaction is the interaction that was sent when the person clicked on the submit button. So all the information that the user filled over here will be sent through the modal interaction. So let's go ahead and retrieve all the values. So I'm going to define a variable called favorite color value, and I'm going to set this to modal interaction dot fields dot get text input value. And then we need to pass in the custom ID of the field. If you remember, our favorite color input custom ID was this. So let's go ahead and add this over here. We can do the same, but for our hobbies. So I'm going to replace this with hobbies input, and I'm going to change the variable name to hobbies value. Now that we have the values, we can reply to this interaction and tell the user what they filled in. So I'm going to say modal interaction dot reply, and I'm going to say your favorite color and we'll pass in the favorite color value. And we'll do the same for your hobbies. We'll pass in the hobbies value. Now let's also catch any errors that might occur. And I'm gonna go ahead and console log these. Awesome, so that's pretty much it. So let's save our file and restart our bot. Back in Discord, let's try to run the command once again. So I'm going to set the favorite color to, let's say, red and some of your favorite hobbies. Let's just set it to coding and submit. It's now going to reply to us and it's going to say your favorite color is red and your hobbies are coding. So that's pretty much it when it comes to modals. If you guys have any problems, be sure to join my Discord server and I'll help you out from there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.